Hey everybody, it's Mark Hanna. I'm here with Wisdom Gaming, as usual, unscripted, unapologetic, uncensored, and psychologically immune from social media scoring. I'm Grecian Formula. So this video is designed specifically because I promised to do this for a game called Russia Besieged. This game is really an excellent and fun game, at least for the first couple years of the campaign game. Uh, really exciting. Uh, there's a couple things that are happening with this game. One that I've instigated recently in terms of how the Germans can succeed to survive from 1943 all the way to 45 and at least duplicate historically what happened. That's been the, the crux of the issue for one of the threads in the game that I started. And, you know, I really asked and solicited. I was looking for people who might give some advice on actually playing past 1942 with the Germans. Um, I got a couple of interesting results from that. Uh, the, the best one was from a guy named Tom Morin, I think. Um, he mentioned that he had succeeded in doing this as the Germans, and he proposed a certain defensive structure for the Germans past 1943, which I questioned because I wanted to see how he could actually pull that off. Uh, went back and forth a little bit. What I asked for, though, was some more information. I wanted to see a vassal module layout of exactly how this defense might work past 1942. Still waiting for that. Uh, I'll take his ideas myself and run with them and see if it's actually feasible, what he's suggesting, um, and present that in a later video. But for now, the crux is that I haven't really got a good answer from anybody. Nobody's really said that they've succeeded at this and then demonstrated how. Uh, another guy, uh, you always get this, when, you, when you're in uh, BGG forums, you get into these, uh, you know, little matches between people, you know, intellectual arguments. Uh, uh, one of them I'm going to completely refute here in a moment. Um, but let me just make it clear. Uh, I think it's a good game. I do not think that it makes sense for the Germans to have an advantage in this game at the beginning. Uh, I think that would be a bad idea that they have the advantage in the first half of the game and then that's supposedly balanced by the Russians having the advantage in the second half of the game. That will not work. And I'm going to explain exactly why that doesn't work. Uh, so that can't possibly be, hopefully, how the designer has pursued this because if so, it's a guaranteed flawed design. Which would be a shame because... Uh, you know, the way Art is, the way he reacts to people in chat, he's constantly on top of things. He's the most, one of the best developer designers I've ever seen when it comes to responsiveness. Um, but in general, like all designers, they're protective of their baby. It's their creation. And, uh, you know, if somebody comes along, Johnny come lately like me, which is what I am. This game's been around for a while. And I come, started commenting about things that could be looked at and should be looked at. You know, it may not be appreciated. And I can understand that. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I'm not going to uh, avoid discussing what are truths that I perceive them to be at the moment. So let's go into this discussion here that I'd want to share with you about conditional probability and why it does not work to give one side the advantage in the first half of the game to then later be balanced by giving the other side the advantage in the second half. Uh, and it's a very simple probability calculation. It's right here. Let me move my uh, picture. Okay. So this chart is designed to explain why the game can't be balanced by using unbalanced elements. It's based on conditional probability. Let's take a look. Okay, so first of all, let me get one of these pens here. I'll try this one. Is that too big? No, it's fine. 
All right. So according to this one guy, uh, uh, the he thinks that I thought the Germans had the advantage in the first half of the game. Look, I don't want the Germans to have the advantage in the first half of the game. I don't think it's fair for them to have the advantage in the first half of the game. In fact, what I submit to you is that the Germans should have exactly a 50% chance of winning in the second half of the game. I'm uh, sorry, in the first half of the game and the second half of the game. But let's propose for a moment that the Germans actually have an 80% chance to win the first half of the game. Well, what that means is after the first half of the game, if the Germans win, which they will do 80% of the time, the value of the German win, let's just use strict probabilities, is 0 0.8 because they had an 80% chance to win. If the Russians survive the first half of the game, which will happen on 20% of the occasions, the Russians at that time will have a value of 0 0.2 and the game continues. Why is it 0 0.2? Because they only have a 20% chance of surviving. Okay, that's it. So in the second half of the game, let's uh, suppose the situation's reversed. Russia now has an 80% chance to win. The Germans have now a, they've blown it. They only have a 20% chance to win now. So what happens then? Well, the Russians, of course, win 80% of the time. Okay, but in a conditional probability situation, you have to multiply the 20% here with the 80% here to get a final Russian value of a 16% chance to win overall. That's because there's an overwhelming probability the Germans will win in the first half. You cannot make up the imbalance of the first half of the game with an imbalanced second part of the game. It doesn't work like that. What it does do, actually, is improves the German chances of winning because they actually get their 80% that they got from the first chance, plus they still have a 20% chance to win 20% of the time. That's 4% of the chance. And they wind up with an 84% chance to win the Russians have a 16% chance to win, and anybody who's studied probabilities know that this needs to add up to 100%. So, that's why you can't design a game to have an imbalanced probability win. It's got to be 50% on each side. In the design phase, now, it may turn out that during the game play, we'll see that the Germans are winning more than half in the first half of the game. And in fact, I think that what's happening here, and I could be wrong about this, I hope I'm wrong about this, I want to be wrong about this. Let me make that clear. The Germans should have a chance to survive to the end of the game, and the Russians should have an equal chance of getting to that stage. If the first half of the game gives a 50-50 chance and the second half of the game gives a 50-50 chance, then it's a balanced game because that's when the probabilities will total out correctly. Okay, I could show that to you, but it's not necessary. By now, you should probably be able to figure that out. So uh, what needs to be done here then is to examine why we don't have completed games, if it is turning out that it's a useless task to continue to play as the Germans, which is what we're starting to think is the case, then that's why there's no games being finished. People aren't playing it past 1943. They just aren't. Uh, we've played three games, a guy that I play with a lot. We both have 30 years of experience. We understand the theory behind games. We can look at things. Uh, and uh, we're, we're seeing that the Germans just completely lose, lose track of the situation because they can't cover the territory that they need to cover based upon where they got and still survive the significant number of three-to-one attacks that the Russians can generate. Why do I bring this up? What's the big deal with three-to-one attacks? Well, let's take a look. Uh, let me see if I can switch to uh, another uh, program. Just let me pause the tape here. Okay, 
continuing this uh, conversation here. Here's the game that he and I were playing. I was the Russians. This is early 43. And uh, just a second, I need to get this. I need to get this head out of the way again. My big fat head. All right. So you can see what happened here. Is the uh, it's quite an interesting situation. You you will notice that uh, due to an error I made, he was able to slip into Leningrad. Uh, I didn't defend the beaches well enough, and he was able to do an, a strategic invasion over here, and I hadn't garrisoned Leningrad with enough. Um, he also put all his force in 1942 to take Moscow and push his way forward. In fact, he got all the way up here. And he actually had Kazan. He'd taken Gorky. He'd taken a worker stationed at Gorky and was threatening to cut off what I would call the critical supply line here that leads off the map that the Russians need to supply their guys in the Finland district. Um, it was quite precarious for me, but I was able to push him back, and you can see how he's been pushed back behind that river line. Um, he's taken quite a few casualties. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Here's the replacement bins. The Germans have taken a lot of casualties because he's a very aggressive player. Um, and as a result, you can see what my casualties look like as well. Okay. Uh, he nearly lost the game when we had this strategic battle around Kharkov. That was his last city he had to hold. And I did everything but get into the city. I drove away his units, but in this game, if you don't get a certain result, you cannot advance after combat. And the second impulse, I could not advance into Kharkov, or I would have won at that time. And as you can see, he deliberately decided not to decided not to pursue a southern strategy. So uh, what happened was we've had a great deal of fighting in 43 in this area. You can see he's got a lot of stuff, his mobile stuff. It, it's always recommended. It seems to me as the Germans, the, one of the ways you have to try to win is by destroying the capacity of the Russians to attack you, which means you're constantly attacking. But you're also then, in many cases, in danger of being left exposed and that's what happened here uh, we played this turn out and what happened was uh, essentially uh, i had two stukas you can see i have another one uh, it's not a stuka Sturmovic, coming in all right i also had uh, this guy being railed i could also build a guy at stalino i built a 9-7 that had just been destroyed in the battles over here i rebuilt it right here uh, and i came in so i came in and I was able to do a number of three to one attacks. I had this artillery here. I had this. I had this. He had stationed himself down here as well. And these guys came around. Uh, these these guys to encircle Depta Petrov. I'll tell you what, he did not want to get rid of Depta Petrovsk. I will say this I don't think the Germans retreated enough, in my opinion, but it still didn't mitigate the problem of three to ones out in the open. And let me illustrate that by just showing you the table. I have to say this is a great vassal module because it has everything you need. So the tables are here. All right, check it out. So this one has, uh, where's that combat table? Those are the DRMs. Okay, now you gotta look at this and you need to recognize that if you look at a table at three to one here, this is one of the most destructive 3 to 1 tables I've ever seen in a game like this. Every single result is some kind of step loss for the defender. Uh, if they get lucky, it's only an engagement result. But an engagement result generally favors the attacker if it's in the first impulse because that means the attacker's reduced by only one step with his multiple units and the defenders in their one hex lose a step. The next attack is going to be at four or five to one. So they're going to be killed. Okay. Continuing to analyze this, 
I guess, really, the best d result for the defender is a D1, where they only lose a step. That happens 20% of the time, but they still do lose a step. The X2 result, the Russians can handle this. They're fine with this. They lose two steps. The Germans lose two steps. No problem. Then we get into, you know, it's only with a 7 or more. That's a 40% chance. It's a lot. 40% uh, chance you get a D2 or a D3 or 20% chance of a DE. Okay, that's the fact of the matter. All right, now, uh, we're told, basically, that, well, uh, you need to use river lines and stuff like that. Yes, of course, we know the advantage of that. But that gives you a minus 2. It's only if you get that minus 1 or minus 2 that you get to a DR range. But if you're trying to hold a city because it's part of your key defense line, you may not want to retreat, so you'll take a step loss. But if a river, if it's a river line, you'll have to. And then the river line's compromised, and then they're going to get across. Retreat you kind of where they want to because the attacker does all the retreating in this game. And, you know, take you out piecemeal in the second impulse. I'm telling you, I think this 3 to 1 is too powerful for the Russians. It's, it's not too powerful for the Germans because at the beginning of the game, they use 5 and 6 to 1s to avoid casualties. They don't want to take those X2s. Uh, the Germans want to also get uh, surrender results if they can. Uh, we didn't have a lot of those, but there was quite a few. I was getting a little worried about uh, the number of, uh, especially these... these uh, mechanized units because you need them you do need them to make your guards units what are they shock armies right okay so it was after this turn I didn't just I'm not showing you the end of my turn but you can imagine I came into this area with a bunch of three to ones uh, they all got cut off and surrounded and stuff and we're in miserable condition um and then up here, I cracked the river line, got Yaroslavl, uh, moved in towards Moscow by cracking this line, you know, taking this in the flank and rolling them up. Uh, the Germans, it, this is where I've stated in the forum, and by the way, I'm not going back to that forum to talk about this because uh, the, the what happens in uh, fan forums like this, and it's okay, and I don't take offense at it, the people who are coming to that forum are fans of the game. The designer's a fan of the game. Neither one of those guys or groups of people don't want, they don't want to see their game criticized. Uh, but, you know, if, if you come in with an objective idea and say, hey, look, what can be done here? Um, it'd be nice to get some feedback that's not, uh, well, you're making mistakes in the way you're typing things or uh, you said this, so this means this. Um, if you're going to do that to me, you better be right. I can tell you that right now because uh, uh, I'm not too tolerant of being told of things that are not true. And then especially when people put words in my mouth that I never said. <laughs> in fact, that's one reason I'm moving to these videos because I just get tired of that in the forums. There's, It, it seems to be one of the hobbies of forum people to um, you know, play these kinds of little mental gymnastics games. And look, uh, mea culpa, I've done it myself, and it can be fun for a while, but, you know, right now, I just want to move on and really enjoy these games. So, uh, that's kind of the end of this presentation. The important thing to remember is that you cannot balance the game by balance. Im an imbalanced game in the first half cannot be balanced by trying to make the second half of the game better for the other side, uh, because it just doesn't work that way. Not for balancing purposes, anyway. Um, you got to balance it all the way through. And I respect the designers try to do this. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, but uh, I caution you, if you're a designer and you think you can balance a game like that, um, sorry, you can't. All right, so thanks for listening, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe it. If you didn't like this video... You got all the way to this position and listen to me, then I have to thank you for that as well. So, again, I'm Mark Hanna, Grecian Formula. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'll be posting this shortly on BGG. 
And you can join me on my YouTube channel if you like more of my analysis or just simply love to hate me. See ya.